to Chairs No Waiting, episode number 302, Tribute Artist Memories, part three. Two Chairs No Waiting is brought to you each week by the fine folks over at weaversdepartmentstore.com. Head over to Weavers. If you're a Mayberry fan, and I know you are, or you wouldn't be listening to this show, you'll love browsing around over at Weavers at all the t-shirts, clothes, uh, all kinds of Mayberry collectibles, calendars. If it's Mayberry, you're going to find it there. Head over to weaversdepartmentstore.com and check it out. Two Chairs No Waiting is also brought to you by donations from listeners just like you. The executive producers of Two Chairs No Waiting number 302 are Gaither Harwood and Daniel Tidwell. Thank you for our co-executive producers. Hello, everybody. I'm Alan Newsom, your host for Two Chairs No Waiting. It is always a pleasure to have you here in Mayberry with me. I hope you're enjoying uh, this celebration that we're continuing that started with episode number, uh, what was it, 300. Yes, because we're at 302. Episode 300, when we started hearing from these Mayberry tributes, uh, just uh, these tribute artists, uh, just their memories of uh, Mayberry, their events that they've been to, experiences that they have had because they're fans of the Andy Griffith Show and because they do this tribute artist stuff. Uh, That includes me, I suppose, as Floyd. But, uh, folks, again, I want you to remind you, these guys are just huge fans of The Andy Griffith Show, just like you. You know, if you're listening to this because you enjoy The Andy Griffith Show and finding out new things, all of us that do the tribute artist work, we're just fans, too. And that's what these memories are all about, sharing some things with you that uh, the tribute artists have experienced over the years uh, and going to different Mayberry events or just meeting you, meeting you at events. That's what it's all about. And uh, we were uh, at the Lakeshore Inn and Restaurant and Marina over in Double Springs, Alabama. Great place. If you haven't been there, it's really nice. Uh, we got to sit around in the restaurant for about an hour probably uh, eating, uh, of course, which is our favorite path, uh, pastime. <laughs> And visiting about the Andy Griffith Show. How could things not be better? Eating and talking about Andy Griffith Show. Wow. So uh, those that were present, and let me go ahead and tell you who they were. It was uh, David Browning, the Mayberry deputy. Kenneth Otis Junkin. uh, Tim Pettigrew, who's Goober. uh, Jeff Branch, who's Howard Sprague, our county clerk. Phil Fox, who does Ernest T. Bass. Bob Briscoe Mundy. uh, He does Briscoe Darling, of course. Uh, and Michael Oliver, who does Gomer for us. So now you're going to hear from David Browning here at the beginning, and uh, he's going to be talking about, and I give him a hard time, so just to give you some clarity here, he uh, he's writing a book. David Browning is writing a book. Of course, he's been talking about this book to me for 10 years, maybe, writing a book about his, his experiences uh, <laughs> on the road doing the Mayberry Deputy, and uh, he has actually getting close to having it written, but I was giving him a hard time here at the beginning about him writing a book. So you're going to hear from him. Uh, and gosh, I can't remember the order. I know you hear from uh, uh, Michael Oliver and Bob Bundy, I believe, is after David. Anyway, you'll hear them. And folks, I hope you're enjoying this. This is, again, just continuing the celebration of the 300th episode. We're in our third episode of Doing So. And uh, we have one left, so this is uh, so. If you hadn't heard them, head back over to 300 and listen to episode 300, 301, and now 302, as we're about to head over and hear from David Browning himself, the Mayberry deputy. So, folks, I hope you're going to enjoy this. And uh, here we go, David. Take it away. Speaking of Jim Clark, if I could just tell a quick story. Yeah. And again, I'm putting this in my book. You have a book? I'm, I'm going to. It's almost ready. I'm going to have a book. Commercial time. That's right. It's called We Have Extra Security Tonight. And it'll be out sometimes before the year 2020. Have it out. But uh, Jim called me up one time and he said, uh, this was early. I was still working at the outdoor drama. And he said, uh, you ever been to Fanfare? I said, no. Well, would you like to? I, said, well, yeah. I guess. What, what is it? I mean, I, he said, well, you know, all the country music musicians and all of that. And he said, you can stay at my house. He said, it'd, it'd be fun. And uh, I said, okay. So I drove down like on a, a Thursday night, stayed at Jim's house. Friday morning we got up, 
and Friday is, at that time was a slower day, and then right. Saturday got busier, and then Sunday was a big hoopla. And I thought, well, he's got his tickets. We're going to go in. Well, we go to the security entrance and get out, and, of course, people start yelling at me, hey, Barney, hey, Barney. <laughs> and Jim's got his camera, and the security guards start yelling, Barney, get over here, get over here. So we went over to the security entrance. Come on in. Come on. Jim, Jim says, I'm his photographer. <laughs> he had no tickets or anything. <laughs> but before that day was over, I was on stage with Faith Hill. Oh, yeah. Oh, I've yeah. seen that. I've seen the picture. And the next morning, a picture eight by eight of me and her. I don't know, but it was on the front of the Nashville newspaper. I've never seen it, yeah. And then years later, I got to do another gig with Faith Hill. For Cracker Barrel, you were there for that. I was there, yeah. yeah, and Phil Lee was there, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Uh, and that's when I jumped off the stage into that security guard's arms when uh, she kissed me on the jaw, and I oh, I yeah. took off running. Well, the thing I remember about that, Otis, is that was the first time I had Coca-Cola cake from Cracker Barrel. Oh, wow! <laughs> that was about started your love. About sixty or seventy. That was that was it. All right, so we got Bob Mundy over here. Now Bob does Briscoe for us. So what's, what do you think, Bob? What's your, been your favorite Mayberry memory? Well, I would say probably when I started doing this back 12, 14, whatever years ago, Newcastle, I think it was the second, second, the second Mayberry in the Midwest, in Newcastle, Indiana. And uh, Miss Jane, one of the original, well, he was a pipe smoking darling boy. Uh, saw me, took one look at me, and jumped up and had me come around behind the table with him. He had people taking pictures of us. It was just so amazing because I still don't see any resemblance, but he apparently did, and that was, I think it was an honor. It was a real oh, yeah. honor, an honor. That's awesome. And all the, uh, I knew all the darling boys, and Charlene, Maggie Peterson, they're all great, just great people. I just, I have trouble comprehending, in my mind, I have trouble comprehending the, what did you say, the niceness, the, yeah. Yeah, the, the niceness of, of, of these celebrities. It just really blows my mind. Yeah, yeah, because, boy, I mean, every one of them we've met has pretty much just loved us and took us under, uh, took us under their wings, and, yeah. and uh, you know, of course, we just, it's an honor for us all to get to, to visit with them and everything. I never did get to meet the original uh, Briscoe Darling Denver Pyle. I always wanted to. Of course, he's been he's been gone for a long time now. I wish I could get the courage up to call Denver's widow and see if I could just talk to her about what kind of man he was, because he was he was one of my favorite actors. Mine too. Yeah. Mine he was just a great it. actor, and I wish I could get my courage up to to call and just. But I could never get my never never could get the courage worked up to do that. Uh, let's see. So our, our newest tribute artist that's with us this weekend, especially, is Michael Oliver. Now, Michael, the first time we saw him was in Westminster two years ago. Was that when it was? Yeah, that was my uh, my first, or actually second year there, but first year as Gomer. But you had been coming to Mayberry Days for a long time, hadn't you? Oh yeah, this past Mayberry Days was my 14th year, 15th year. Amazing. How did yeah. we miss him? Yeah. They had a big old full beard, I think. Yeah, oh. I have a beard most of the time, but shave for the events. Oh. Man, I can remember uh, looking down the streets there at Westminster and seeing this guy dressed in a deputy uniform. Yeah. When I first saw him, I said, is there another Barney? Then uh, about two steps later, as you moved, I was like, <laughs> that's Gomer. Well, I, mean, I, ran over to him. I ran over to him. I said, what are you doing? He said, oh, Gomer. And I said, I said, how long have you been doing it? He said, today. <laughs> that's, that's like my favorite story said, you tell everybody we meet. I said, get out of here. I said, these yeah. people are going to love oh, you. Yeah, it was awesome. Alan saw me stand there and said, hey, you want to get in this parade? It needs help. Yeah. So I kind of stepped in the back and then, oh, it was great. And then David kind of come up to me and said, what are you doing? How long have you been? And then tells yeah. that story that he tells to everybody that I say, yeah. uh, today. Yeah. And then uh, just just kind of told me you want to be, be part of the group and that it's uh, just kind of gone gone downhill from there <laughs> but no it's I haven't had the privilege of meeting 
people like George Lindsay or I've met his son, which is a fantastic person. Everybody I've met has been just extremely kind to me. Even well, you the, worked on stage this year at Colonel Tim's yeah. with Elizabeth McRae. Elizabeth McRae, wonderful human being, sweetest she loves you. Yeah. sweet woman. But uh, yeah, I mean, everybody I have met has just been outstanding and kind, including present company. Everybody that's in, invited me in, and except for Phil, but you know, you can only expect so much. <laughs> he is Ernest T. So yeah. But going back to what everybody else said, it's David Browning that's uh, that sought me out and said, "Hey, you know, you need to be a part of this." And he's just been a mentor to me from from the well, start. Well, I tell you the truth, you know, you've all said that, but there is a certain nature of person that fits within a group of people. And the basis of all of it, I think, is, is a genuine love of the show first. That's right. And if, you, if you've got that, and, and we all get stressed, we all work hard and we get stressed, but entertaining people is not an easy thing. Uh, especially at a place like Mayberry Days, you've always got to be on. You've always got to make each person feel like you're performing just for them. So you, you, know, you get stressed and you get tired. And so it's not an easy thing. But if, but if you're based in a love of the show, then, then somewhere the energy comes. Somewhere it comes up through you. And I think every person that's been talking here has experienced that at some point. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, you've worked three days in a row and you're just worn out. And all of a sudden somebody walks somebody up and they want you. Right. They want you to be who they want you to be. And you do it. You find that energy. And you do it. That's right. You find, you find energy. You find yeah. it somewhere. You find yeah. it somewhere. And then you suffer for it later. Yeah. <laughs> but it's worth it because of what yeah. you do for this. Yeah. Alan, uh, yeah. earlier this afternoon, Tim and Michael and I were talking about things, and I said, you know, I remember when I finished high school, a lot of my classmates and you were friends. 32, uh, weren't you? Four. Yeah. 34. And they said, you know, the best part of your life is now over. And I said, because you look at all the fun you had. And I said, that can't be right. But I, I was telling them, as much fun as I had in high school, I have never had more fun and enjoyed anything with you guys. And it's like David said, you're, we, we all kind of fit in. We've had some that didn't fit in, but the love of the show, you that can tell. That's a foundation, that's exactly. a foundation, yeah. And, uh, and I just want to say how much I enjoy being around you guys. You are family to me, yeah, that's exactly and it's right. been special, and they were but wrong they, about high school. <laughs> <laughs> but there have been moments on stage or in a crowd of people with all of us where there was a magic moment oh, yeah. of something. Right. Uh, I think of when, when we were doing the karate thing, <laughs> the judo thing. When I dropped you? Yeah, well, when I pulled you over. <laughs> uh, I mean, that to me is a memory that will last forever. Oh, yeah. Because you can't script it, you can't make it up, it happens, and you deal with it. Same thing with uh, 14A this year. Yeah, I mean, you just got to go with it. And sometimes the real magic happens in that. Yeah, well, I agree. And, uh, well, I think the, is what we're all saying is that the, the, the love of the Andy Griffith show kind of draws a similar kind of person. I believe. Yeah, I think you're right. And right. and we all love the show and we love the characters on there. So when we're pre we're pretending to be these guys, it's more than just pretending because we we respect the show and we want to honor it by doing a good job as that character. Uh, because I know a lot of times when uh, well when we're just sitting around like this, but we're dressed in character, we actually stay in character yeah. and and yeah, interact right. with each other like we were really. Yeah. Floyd and Barney and, and uh, Briscoe and you know we're those characters and so really whatever we say is pretty much we're channeling the real the real guys and I think uh, I don't know I think there's something special about that and, and we've well, all a, been it's a genuine respect yeah for the particular actor that created the character right uh, as, as Andy Griffith said one time Don Knotts was probably the greatest comedic actor and, and it's, that's in quotes actor he was not a stand-up comic he didn't want to be a stand-up comic he was an actor that did funny characters and he was probably the most brilliant at it you look at Jim Neighbors and George Lindsay and, and Howard Morris and Hal Smith and, and all of these people were masters of their craft oh, yeah. And if they're that good, then it's pretty easy to pick up on some stuff mm -hmm. if you're an actor, too. And uh, 
Uh, people ask me all the time when I'm on the road, they say, well, was, was he one of your favorite? I said, well, I had a lot of favorites. I said, Don Knotts was right up there with him. I loved Red Skelton and Jackie Gleason and all of Art Carney and Jack Benny and all of those. But Don Knotts had a, had a quirkiness about him that if you're an actor, you sort of have this little file cabinet in the back of your head and you file away these little things that you can pull out if you need them. Right. And you all have done the same thing with, with the characters that you personify. And, um, and that's why I love doing Floyd's book. And I just, I love when we interact with each other uh, doing that. Because uh, I think he was a great comedic actor as well, and a good dramatic actor. But they were all masters of their craft. Yeah. And like you say, it's, it's kind of like a part of you that, that you reflect back on them. Because how many, I mean, I know you guys have had it, and that's one of the things I've seen recently, just starting this thing, is how many people have asked you, you it, how were you, you know, you're so great here in person as you were on the show. They yeah, think yeah. that you are that person, or at least related to them in some way. Mm -hmm. When they find out you have no relation whatsoever, it's, just, it's hard for them to believe. You know, one of the neatest things, and I've never, and I'm honest when I tell you this, and I think I've told you before, but in my mind, I have never believed that I look very much like Don Knotts. I put the uniform on and do a character, and with some of the mannerisms and stuff, and it transports people. But at Don's funeral, or at his uh, memorial service, celebration of life, Alan was there. You didn't go to that. Jim Clark was there. But uh, I go into the, to the Writers Guild room there where they were going to have the service. And I sit down, and a lady behind me leans up and taps me on the shoulder and says, Are you his brother? Wow. wow. Did you not know that? Wow. Yeah, and I said, No, ma'am. I worked with him a lot, but uh, no relation. Yeah, that happened. That's crazy. That's Bizarre. Crazy. Wow. I hope you guys are enjoying that. Can you imagine that being mistaken for Don Knight's uh, brother? Well, I tell you what, David Browning, uh, very humble that he is, is uh, he is the guy who got all the tribute artists that uh, perform together. There's other tribute artists around. Uh, that perform, but it's uh, there's a troop of us here that we're listening to these guys. There's a few more. There's uh, uh, Christy McClendon, who does Andalina with Charlene's daughter, and uh, I'm sure I'm forgetting some other folks, but she's one of the others that f uh, work with us a lot. And, you know, it's just uh, it is amazing uh, that we were all just able to gather together and really, uh, you know, get – enjoy each other's company and become uh like kenneth junkin said i believe a little bit of a family you know if you've ever been to mayberry days or you've ever been to any of the events at, that like that where you actually get to spend time with other mayberry fans uh, sitting around talking and visiting having a fun uh fun time there together when you go back the next time and you see them again there's a smile that comes to your face that is just special because it is like family you know we're gathering back together again to visit and to share a love we have for the andy griffith show but it's not just that there's a there's a bond that we have i believe is mayberry fans fans of the andy griffith show uh where we're just a little different and i'm sure a lot of people say we're a lot different especially the ones that dress up like people <laughs> but we're a little bit different we uh we're all about family we're all about uh, doing what's right, honor, respect. There's just a lot of things that the Andy Griffith Show entails that I really believe that fans of the Andy Griffith Show live out in their daily life. And it's something really very special about being around a lot of people that think like that. When you're at Mayberry Days, you get to visit with them. You get to sit around. You get to eat with them, break bread. And, folks, it is a special experience. Uh, the next week here, I'm fixing to go on the Mayberry Cruise with some of these guys that we're talking today. And that's going to be special, too, because this is our ninth Mayberry Cruise. And a lot of the people that went on the first Mayberry Cruise have been on almost every one of them. So it's nice getting back together and sitting around and breaking bread and visiting and sitting and talking. And let me tell you, I didn't know how a cruise was going to be uh, related to the Andy Griffith Show. But basically, you sit around on the deck, which is kind of like a front porch, and you visit, and you talk, and you eat. 
So it's just like the Andy Griffith Show, except Aunt B's not making the food. <laughs> so, folks, one of these Mayberry events, I want you to take time to go. I know you're going to love it. Now, if you've been, if you have been, I'd like to hear your memories of going to some of these events, of Mayberry people and meeting them and being a part of them. You can call me at 888-684-8415 and leave me a message. I'd love to hear from you. I know the other folks that listen to this show would love to hear from you. If you're enjoying hearing from these Mayberry tribute artists, we're all just fans. If you enjoy their memories, other people will probably enjoy yours. So give us a call. Email me at floyd at imayberry.com. If you don't want to call me, I'll read it. However you'd like to get in touch with me, there are a lot of ways. If you head over to twochairsnowaiting.com, you'll find them. But I would love to hear from you, and I'm sure the other folks listening to this show would like to hear from you too. Until next time, everybody, we'll see you then right here on Two Chairs No Waiting. Goodbye, everybody.